Okay, this is Manny. So today he is going to change the, uh, or grease the bearings on my camper. We're grease the wheel bearings. We're going to check them out, make sure they're okay. Keep all some fresh. I'm going to remove the cotter pin. This cotter pin locks this crown nut in place so it doesn't turn off or turn spin loose or tight while in motion. It looks pretty greased, doesn't it? Or not? Yeah, they do, but we're going to look, take a look inside the bearing, the actual bearing. And see what so this is one of the first things that you want to do when you buy a used camper, is have these bearings checked. right you never have these these nuts super tight you'll burn your bearings out you have to back off tighten and then back off so the hub spins free you don't want to go too far but <clears throat> you don't want your bearings too tight on that that nut is supposed to play like that That's so so it can spin right because the bearing is actually the cone shape of the paper fit. And the tighter you screw the nut in, the tighter the bearings get. So you only want to tighten it in to set the bearings, set, and then back off them. And move that nut That way the bearings don't, it's not too tight and it won't overheat it when you Okay. Yeah, they say that when you pull over to a rest stop or something, always go back and feel the wheels and see if they're real hot. Well, with technology today, we have we have those little temperature guns, the little radar temperature gun, uh, infrared uh, thermometers. You can always take one of those and just aim it at the hub and aim it. And it'll tell you exactly what temperature the hub is reading. bearings they ride against this race this is the bearing race this is the bearing race it's tapered and that bearing rides against that that's why I said you don't want to have that too tight because it would, it would create too much heat and cause it to, to burn out so how's it look it's pretty good so far <clears throat> now, I don't have any seals to put in here or anything. This is a bearing as well. This is a seal. Your bearing. That's your hub seal. It keeps the grease from coming out when it gets it will get hot. I mean not very hot, but it'll heat up. And the seal keeps the grease from seeping out. I've seen some wheels with like grease splattered on them. Is that yeah, what you're talking and, about? In the back of this would be in the back of the wheel. By, oh, okay. Some campers have brake shoes on them. This one doesn't. But the one, you know, if you see wheel over the back of your wheel, the back side of your rim, like slung around your tire in the back of your rim, most likely the seal is bad, and you'd want to get that replaced. But if in an event that happens, you would, I would recommend you just get a new bearing set and seal it as well. What I'm going to do is 
Now, I don't have a new seal to put in this hub, but I can look down in there and I can see the bearing down in there. What you can see in there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can see the bearing down in there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to pack that bearing with it in the hub without moving it, because I don't want to damage it. If I had extra parts and new parts, I would just pop it all out. And is that something we should get? That's totally up to you. I mean, you know, if you feel better buying brand new bearings, the bearings will come with the races as well. These races drive out. You drive those races out. And when you, your new bearing sets will come with them. So is this one good? This is good. Okay. This is good. Yeah, your bearings are good. That's, that's the thing. They're, they're really good. Okay, then we'll keep using these. Yeah, if it would have been something that, you know, I would feel good about, I would tell you. I can get you know, just to... Okay. Okay, I guess I'm not going to interrupt her seal because her seal is good. It wasn't it showing any signs of leaking. So we're not going to disturb that. So what I'll do is on the inside of this hub, I'm going to add one in the grease. Looks yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And the grease. When this hub is spinning, the centrifugal force will push the grease out, up and out. So it will feed it will feed grease to the hubs, to the bearings, just through centrifugal force. And they do have grease caps with grease with a fitting in here that you can take a grease gun and and add grease. Those are called bearing buddies, right? Yeah, bearing yeah. buddies. Yeah, the easy way to do it. But even those, you still have to check on them, you know what I mean? Just like anything else, you know. You have to open them up sometime and check, make sure it's doing its job the way it's supposed to. Just to be on the safe side. That grease in there. It's a lot less messy if you have that other cap and you just shoot the grease in. It is. It is. It doesn't hurt. You can jack your camper up. And roll your wheel. Just spin your wheel and listen for any noises like crackling or, um, you know, it has to free spin. You can't have nothing holding it back. Anything restricting it, turning. If it does, then if you spin it and it has a your regular spin to it, then you got a bearing problem. But some of the campers have have the brake shoes in, so they would probably make a scratching noise. But but you want to spin it and make sure it's a free spin, almost like a roller skate wheel. Because if it doesn't, then then you have bearing issues. Too tight or the bearings. Too when you spin it, it won't be so smooth of a roll. Nasty. <laughs> it 
it. But I'd rather have nasty fingers than the on the side of the highway. That's true. Especially me this, by myself. This just white so Uh oh. Got a phone call. Phones always ring at the weirdest time, don't they? Tighten it and then go back a little bit. This is why I said you need to make sure you have the nuts. The campers with the brakes, the brake drum area is a little more complex. This is just this idle hub, you know, with their brakes. That's so pretty simple. Pretty simple. Yeah, it only weighs 800 pounds. Don't use Harbor Freight the pins in here. If you replace these, if you're replacing your cotter pins, this one, these are very strong. Do not use like cotter pins from Harbor Freight for this, for something like this. You want a, you want a good quality uh, pin in here. Cotter pin, you want a good quality one because the um, Harbor Freight ones would definitely fail for this because they're just made out of tin. These are actually made out of pretty good uh, pretty good steel they, they can take it and they won't fail on you you have to bend if you can bend them with your bank with my hand you pretty much you don't want that that's too hard. right okay let's do that again close up hold on that that's what you want you want that nut to be like that after you tighten it tighten it in and then back it off and you have to be able to do that just a little bit of wiggle room just a little bit of wiggle room like that and that's that's good that's good That heat, when that gets warm, the grease will flow out, it's not over full, it will all work fine. You don't want to over you don't want to too much grease that blows your seal out either. So he's going to finish that up and then move on to the other side. Thanks everybody for watching. Give it a thumbs up. Where Thank you. We? And say bye. 
And I hope you learned something and this helps you out. I hope, this is, I, I hope I was able to help other campers and other people that are doing the same thing, you know, or I need a little help and a little assistance in this. But it's, it's not really that bad of a job. Just make sure you have a floor jack under there. You don't want to crawl underneath while it's on the jack. Pretty simple. You can save money. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Manny. All right. Bye, everybody. See you on the next video.